Hello, I'm Nima Rajan. U.S. President Donald Trump has said he will deploy the U.S. military unless states halt the violent protests that have gripped cities from coast to coast. The president says if governors fail to take action, he will deploy the U.S. military and, quote, quickly solve the problem for them. His statements come as the U.S. braced for another round of protests and the country is already suffering because of the coronavirus outbreak and the depression-level unemployment it has caused. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says Canadians must recognize that there is systemic racism in their own country. Speaking during his daily news conference in Ottawa, the Prime Minister says many don't see the bias, but it is a reality for visible minorities in Canada. Trudeau was asked about the protests in the U.S. and President Donald Trump's talk of deploying the military to stop the unrest. He paused a full 20 seconds before saying that despite watching the U.S. with horror and consternation, Canadians must be aware of the challenges facing black Canadians and other minorities and take steps to address them. Bell Canada has added Swedish telecommunications company Ericsson to the list of suppliers for its high-speed 5G wireless network. It says Ericsson will supply radio access network equipment and also support the rollout of Bell's 5G-enhanced wireless home internet service. Earlier this year, Bell signed its first 5G deal with Nokia, which is a rival of Ericsson and China's Huawei. The selection comes as Ottawa continues an analysis of the cybersecurity and national security implications of 5G networks. A pair of G7 leaders are signaling their disapproval of U.S. President Donald Trump's wish to bring Russia back into the fold, allowing the country's representatives to attend the annual meetings. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said yesterday that the G7 removed Russia from the group after it invaded Crimea, noting that it continues to disrespect international rules. Meanwhile, the U.K. also said that it will block Russia's G7 membership unless it ends its aggressive actions that threaten world security. As protests over the death of George Floyd continue on both sides of the border, health officials are worried that many protesters will contract or spread COVID-19. They're urging demonstrators to take precautions when in large crowds. Some of the larger protests also happen to be in places where COVID-19 cases are increasing. In 15 states and Puerto Rico, the number of newly reported cases is increasing. The government of Ontario is expected today to extend its state of emergency by another month. The measure bans gatherings larger than five people. It also orders the closure of some businesses, such as restaurants and bars, except if they offer takeout or delivery. Ontario has the second highest COVID-19 case and death rate next to Quebec. BC's provincial health officer says protesters at an anti-racism rally in Vancouver following the death of George Floyd could have put themselves at risk of COVID-19. Dr. Bonnie Henry says many among the estimated 3,500 people who rallied on Sunday were wearing a mask and keeping their distance. But people who were there should monitor themselves for symptoms. Dr. Henry says it's too soon for large gatherings just as part of the economy opens up and students voluntarily return to school part-time. Well, instead of rushing to pawn shops to sell stuff in order to get them through the COVID-19 pandemic, many Canadians are emptying store shelves instead. Normally, during an economic crisis, people make every penny count. But in the pandemic era, they're buying TVs, computers and video games to help them cope with the imposed isolation measures. Calgary pawn shop owner John Sanford says the lack of business may soon leave him unable to pay rent. Alberta will join Quebec and Ontario in operating its own provincial parole board. Premier Jason Kenney says it's time the province takes more control with a board staffed by members who better recognize community concerns, particularly in rural areas that face rising crime. The federal government controls the parole system and would continue to make parole decisions for inmates serving sentences longer than two years. For those serving terms under two years, the new Alberta board will make decisions on eligibility and conditions upon release. A Canadian legal activist is calling for quick action to grant asylum to Hong Kong Canadians who wish to leave the semi-autonomous Chinese territory. A.V. Go, the director of the Chinese and Southeast Asian Legal Clinic, says there is a danger that China will prevent the approximately 300,000 Canadians of Hong Kong descent from leaving the country by refusing to recognize their dual citizenship status. Go says the federal government needs to implement immigration and asylum measures to help people get out of Hong Kong before it's too late. 
A U.N. report says the Taliban in Afghanistan are still maintaining close ties with the al-Qaeda terror network, despite signing a peace deal with the U.S. in which they committed to fight other militant groups. The details of the Taliban counterterrorism commitment under the deal were never publicized. Washington's peace envoy says the secrecy is necessary to protect intelligence operations involved in enforcing it. The U.N. report publicized on Tuesday also noted that the Taliban have helped in the fight against the Islamic State group, particularly in driving IS militants from newly gained territory in the eastern Kunar province. Austrian authorities have presented plans for the redesigning of the house where Adolf Hitler was born in 1889. The overhaul will turn it into a police station to make it unattractive as a pilgrimage site for people who glorify the Nazi dictator. The refurbishment is expected to be complete around the end of 2022 and will cost over $5 million. The overhaul follows a years-long back and forth over the ownership and future use of the house in Bernal am Inn on the German border. Well, Parisians have returned to the City of Light's beloved sidewalk cafes as the French government eased lockdown restrictions today. The new freedom, along with Paris's cobbled streets, will be tempered by social distancing rules for the once densely packed cafe tables. France has also rolled out a smartphone tracing app designed to check the virus's spread. Well, that'll do it for today's news update. I'm Nima Rajan. Thank you for joining us today, and I'll see you next time.